Good morning, brothers and sisters. I want to bring a word to you this morning. Uh, I believe it's prophetic. The Lord laid it on my heart. And uh, any anybody's ever listened to or, or read anything I've written, you're not going to be surprised by the word. And so I'm just going to give you the scripture, and I'm going to I'm going to give you what the Lord has laid on my heart. So the scripture is from Jeremiah chapter four: A dry wind of the desolate heights blows in the wilderness towards the daughter of my people. I'm just going to stop there before I read another verse. But a dry wind of the desolate heights blows in the wilderness towards the daughter of my people. Now, for many, many years, I've been talking about a coming storm. There's a dry wind coming, and I believe it's already beginning to blow. A desolate wind. It blows in the wilderness, and it's towards the daughter of my people. And there's a couple of different kinds of wildernesses. There's the wilderness that the Lord draws you into and woos you in, that draws you out of the world, and then there's a wilderness in the world itself, in the very midst of Babylon. And the God's people are being dried up in their spirits. Even as we speak, they're being dried up in their spirits. Their passion is gone. Their passion for the truth is gone. And will continue to go as this wind continues to blow. Now you can call the wind whatever you like, a cultural wind. I've written about that, about that before, the Lord has laid on my heart, that there's a cultural winds that are blowing with hurricane force. And it can do one of two things. It can drag you up, meaning it can take all the life out of you. Or you can stand in the evil day. And this is the evil day, brothers and sisters, without a doubt. This is the evil day. So it can make you dry up, wither, in the wind of this cultural wind, this desolate wind that's creating a wilderness. Or it can make you stronger in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because you stand up against it. You put your face directly into the wind. And despite the trouble that it brings you, and it will bring you trouble. Trouble is not on the horizon anymore. Trouble's at our door. And if you dare to stand up and speak the truth today, truths that we've taken for granted for centuries, for millennia. I'll give you an example of a truth. If you stand up and speak it today, that that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through me, but through the Lord Jesus Christ. See what happens when you tell the rest of the world that there's only one way to heaven. And every other path leads to hell. A simple, basic, fundamental tenet of Christianity is about to blow up in our faces. And you're going to have to stand against this wind that's already blowing. So that's the first part of the the word. Second part is verse 19. Oh, my soul, my soul, I am pained in my very heart. My heart makes a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace. The Lord would say to these people this morning, are you pained? (laughs) Are you pained in your hearts, brothers and sisters? Do you have fire in your bones like Brother Jeremiah had? He's so pained in his heart. What was the fire in the bones of Jeremiah? It was the word of God, wasn't it? The word of God. The written word of God, the spoken word of God, spoken into his heart, taken into his heart. It burned in his bones and he couldn't keep quiet. Even to his own harm, he couldn't keep quiet. This is your challenge today. This is your challenge today. And the last part is verse 23. I beheld the earth and indeed it was without form and void. And the heavens, they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and indeed they trembled. Verse 26, I beheld, and indeed the fruitful land was a wilderness. Let's take that. I beheld the earth, and indeed it was without form and void. Right now, we're becoming a voidless, 
formless humanity. Voidless and formless. And unless you walk in lockstep and in unity with certain cultural norms and truths, you're going to be ostracized completely and worse. Unless you look the same as everybody else, unless you agree with what everybody else agrees with, unless you become as void and without form and without light, because there is no light in that camp, if you join that camp because you cannot stand against the cultural winds, you will be without light. And that wind, that desolate wind that blows will dry up every part of your spirituality in you. It's that dangerous, brothers and sisters. Every part of your spirituality in you, if you join this formless, voidless entity that's, that's encircling the world, even as we speak. And the hills, they move back and forth. Brothers and sisters, I believe there's a great earthquake coming. And I believe that literally and spiritually. So a literal earthquake like we've never seen before, that's going to devastate the world, and a spiritual earthquake that we're already in the midst of that's shaking everything that can be shaken. We're in the midst of that already, and that spiritual earthquake is going to manifest itself also in physical earthquakes, the likes of which we've not seen before. We've simply not seen it before. In all of this I beheld, and indeed, the fruitful land was a wilderness. We're heading towards the wilderness, brothers and sisters. And not a wilderness that I've spoken about before, where the Lord is drawing you into the wilderness, where he can minister to you, his angels can minister to you, separate you away from the world. A wilderness of the world. And that's going to be a place without light. The lights are going out as we speak. So I just encourage you this morning. I mean, think about think about the time that Jeremiah was was uh, ministering to his people. I think it was from like six twenty five to five eighty six. That's that's the the range. And the good King Josiah dies right kind of in the middle of that. And uh, in six oh nine, he's killed by the Egyptians. Nico comes. He replaces the people. Choose a king and. He's allowed to stay, but then he's replaced, and then he's replaced, and finally Zedekiah comes on the scene. And Zedekiah is the one that has the interaction uh, with with Jeremiah. Turbulent times from the time that Josiah dies in 609 to 589. So how many years is that? 609 to 11. 20 years from 609 to 586, 20-something years, not that long of a time, but thoroughly and utterly traumatic for the land of Judah. Multiple kings uh, come and go after the good king dies. And the land is eventually invaded. Uh, there's rebellions. Uh, Babylon comes, Nebuchadnezzar comes back. He, he, he besieges Jerusalem, but he has to return because Egypt threatens him on his other flank. But when he's done with that, he comes back again. And this is the, the serious interaction between Jeremiah and Zedekiah, who stubbornly and proudly refuses to bend to the word of God. And in 586, the whole land is destroyed and, and the temple is destroyed. The temple is destroyed. And they're taken into captivity. Brothers and sisters, the, the time is we're in the midst of an extremely traumatic time. I believe there's similar similarities to the, the time of, of Jeremiah. With the multiple kings and, and trying to figure things out and trying to make alliances here and alliances there and trying to maintain what they have. But a desolate wind had, be, had become, had blown. This, this judgment of God had begun. And it begins with a desolate wind that blows and, and begins to create a, a desolate land, a wilderness. You and I are living in that wilderness. And then out of that comes a, a Jeremiah people 
were pained in their very hearts and souls at the state that they see their land in. They can see through the eyes of the spirit what is unfolding right in front of them. And maybe you're one of those people and you just can't understand why people can't get it. Well, people make choices, don't they? They make choices. And so we're right in the midst of that. And so uh, my word to you is to stand firm in this evil day.